Good afternoon, folks. Been quite a challenge, hasn't it? Six mile an hour winds, tornadoes, anatomy and physiology, programs that won't work. Make you want to throw the towel in, doesn't it? Okay, those of you who are present for section five and six. Hello, Elizabeth. Hope you're well. Let's see. Hello, Madison, Mason, Tamika. Glad you're here. Good, Elizabeth. Glad you made it through that. Okay. We are on the 14th. And um, Tamika here. Mason, did you ever find your wallet? Hello, James. Oh, I guess you had to cancel all your credit cards and things like that. Hmm. My heart goes out to you. My son had to do the same thing. And then he found his wallet. Oh, all that problem. Whew. I bet you are. Mm. Let's see here. Kira. Okay, present. And... Katie. Madison Oaks, Madison Becker. Madison Oaks. Madison Becker. Jason. Hello, Shay. Okay. And Michael. Oh, Michael. Hmm. Hey, go ahead. I know you're in class. I'm sorry, but I'm not a dishonest person, and I could not keep it this way. You sent me the answer key to the test. Thank you yeah. so much. I'm I'll, not a dishonest person, and I was not going to take that test with the answer key. Thank you so, so much, Riley. I, you're welcome. I just opened it, and I saw that you sent it, and I called you right. I know you're teaching class, but I just thought I had to call you and let you know. Okay, just um, uh, delete it. Uh -huh. Okay, and dispose of it however like that, and I'll get the other one for you. Okay, I just I just wanted to let you know before you saw it, and you were like, oh my gosh, she she had the answers. That's why she did good because I I want to know that I'm doing good on the test because I'm I know the material. You know what I mean? Sure. So I just thought I'd let you know. Thank you, Riley. You're welcome. Bye bye. 
Boy, can it get mixed up in a time like this. Hello, Shanika. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Made it through all the wind and stuff. <clears throat> okay. Sonia, okay. Present. Oh my. Okay. Shaniqua, tell me, where was the what page and what figure and so forth did we uh, finish? last week so we can pick up from there. Okay. Is that the last thing? Do we have we covered the um, the neurons on page three eighty five? I guess the three eighty six would be about the neuron. So did we finish on page three eighty seven? In terms of, if you look down at the bottom of three eighty six, you see classification of neurons. And did we cover what over the next page where it says in this first column, functional classification like sensory and afferent, inner neurons, motor, neuro, motor neurons, if efferent neurons, and then structural groups of neuron components. Did we get that far? 
Shaniqua, you think we got that far? Or do we just cover the structure of the axon? <clears throat> Oh, no. Brandon. Hello, Brandon. Who is virtualizing reality? I don't know who that is. Oh, my. <sighs> we had such a nice time yesterday afternoon with someone. An abortion? Are you the same as Anna Thigpen? Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, Destiny. Okay, that was that the last thing, Elizabeth, that we talked about the um, cells that help the nervous system, the support cells. So we talked about what is weight? I don't have a kid named Ann Abortion. Who is it? Is it, are you Ann a thick pen? Thank you, Madison Becker. Thank you very much. Let's see. I don't know how to expel them. How do you close them out? <sighs> yeah, we can expose it. Hmm. How do you X them out? Anybody know how to do that? How do you get rid of that person? Hmm.
Thank you, Elizabeth. I tell you, I'm getting an education from you guys how to work, work this thing. Okay, and I hit the three buttons and I hit remove. Boy, it ain't enough to have a virus and a tornado, is it? You got to have some bonehead who wants to do this kind of stuff. <sighs> All right, I can hit remove, hide user on this screen. Let's see what it says. The user's message will be hidden. Okay, let's see if that works. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. Hmm. Would you all agree after this that uh, I sent you a document on um, electrophysiology on page 393? Did I send you a document on, I think I did, on the charges, sodium and potassium and so forth? Does anybody remember getting that document? It's what these people do. They cost you time and energy. Okay. She mm. well occurs. Golly, here we go again.
Well, can you hear me now? Good for you, Destiny. You can do it for me. That's great. I'm gone from virtualizing reality to Dixie Normus. They just changed their name. Wow. It's kind of like those people that go and shoot folks up, isn't it? Don't appreciate living in a free country. <clears throat> Okay, you can hear me. Good. So um, let's go back. Good, good. It's okay with me. You'll have to show me how to work it. I'd be glad for one of you to teach me that stuff. Okay, let's do this then. Just to go over, let's see, where was it? 79, I think it was, page 79. Good. Uh oh. I think we got another troll bend over. Wow, they just keep coming, don't they? Wow. Okay, well, maybe we can do it like that. Hmm. Okay, while this rude individual is dreaming up another um, name, look on page 79. Sounds good to me, Destiny. Look on page 79, and some of you may have a different book, but you're looking at a heading that says active transport via membrane proteins. And it's in chapter chapter three, Kira. Chapter three. Okay, everybody hopefully is on page 79, and you know about active transport. That is a way to get uh, substances across the cell membrane, but it costs energy, as opposed to simple diffusion or osmosis. So look down at the bottom of that column on page 79. And you see in the next to the last paragraph, it says the major primary active transport pump is in the body is the antiport pump. You don't have to know that terminology known as the sodium potassium pump. Now, <clears throat> if you will look, I think have, I think we've covered some of this or maybe I just wrote it down for you. But let's do this. Let's look. For just a second. Well, where is it? Look on page 72 for just a moment. Keep your finger there with uh, uh, page 79 and look on page 72. We're looking at figure 3.4. 3.4, figure 3.4. 
And so you're looking at a plasma membrane and you see the purple structures that uh, traverse the membrane from the outside to the inside. Those are different proteins. Um, and you remember proteins are different because of their amino acid makeup, the number of amino acids, the sequence of the amino acids, and that affects the shape of the protein and therefore its function. So you got a number of proteins associated with the cell membrane. Now, over here on page 79, yes, that's right, Kira, uh, the mosaic model, they'll call it a fluid mosaic. That's right. Because it does, the, the proteins are not stationary. They are moving amongst the phospholipid uh, molecules. So you're correct. So on page 79, you look down at the bottom and you see it says the major primary, uh, in that next to the last paragraph, it says the major uh, primary active transport in the body is the antiport uh, pump known as the sodium potassium pump. Now, there are other pumps. There are the proteins that do various things. We just don't have time to get into all of that. It gets pretty deep in that stuff. But anyway, you want to keep that in mind. All right. Now, look over on page 80. See if everybody can find page 80 and look at figure 310. Now, as you look at that picture, you see the phospholipid bilayer and you see these little um, circular structures, sodium and potassium. Hello, Courtney. That's okay. We're on page 80 in your textbook. Oh my, okay. Well, hang in there, Courtney, and I'll get back with you after the lecture, okay? Hang in there. Thank you. Let me write your name down here. Okay. Boy, that's like giving you a rifle with no bolt. Mm, useless. Okay, just hang in there, Courtney. <laughs> All right. Um, you're looking at the phospholipid bilayer on page 80, and you see this purple structure. And that purple structure is a protein whose specific function is to be the sodium potassium pump. It's not going to help you digest any food. It's not going to catalyze the, the making of some substance like insulin. Its whole life in our body is to be the sodium potassium pump. Now, as you follow this, as you look on um, at figure 310, and you uh, see the membrane there, and you see that purple structure, that's the, the um, sodium potassium pump. You notice inside, you see where the cytosol is. It says low sodium concentrate. It says cytosol in the right-hand corner of that first uh, illustration and you see a little sodium molecule going to move into that little hole where the other two sodium molecules are beside it and then on the right hand side you see two empty hole or empty half holes and this protein if you follow it in the next step follow the arrow over on the right follow it to the purple protein and you see it's loaded with three sodiums, no potassiums. Now, I'm not going to ask you to repeat this. I just want you to kind of grasp the, the basic idea about this. And so you see it's got three sodiums but no potassiums. Then look at the next picture underneath, and you see it kicks out the three sodiums, 
and it starts loading potassium on the right side. Now, this is the way an artist draws it. It may not be quite like that, but you get the point. You go to the next one over here to the left, and you see it's loaded with two potassiums. And then you go up, and you see it pops out the two potassiums. So it'll throw out three sodiums. They're positive ions. And they'll bring in two potassiums. That's what you want to remember. That sodium-potassium pump pumps out three molecules of sodium and brings into the cell two potassium ions. Now, because it does that, it creates a greater, a more positive charge outside the cell than it does inside the cell. A more positive charge outside the cell than inside the cell. Now, the book does not is not going to represent it as a positive out here and a smaller positive uh, symbol inside the cell. It's going to put a negative in there. It's going to put a negative. That's okay. It just means it's different. So now look over on page 82. Everybody go to page 82. And in the first column, as you come down, you see a picture of the plasma membrane. And you see the ECF, that's outside. You see the cytosol, that's inside the membrane, right? ECF is fluid outside of the cell. The cytosol is the fluid inside the cell. Now notice the positive charges on the outside and the negative charges on the inside. Now we're going to treat it as positive on the outside, negative on the inside. It's really just more positive outside than it is neg than it is on the inside. But just let's just stick with positive on the outside, negative on the inside. So so very close to the membrane, the outside has a positive charge. And we'll just use this terminology. The inside has a negative charge. Now let's come down underneath there. You see you got positives on the outside, negatives on the inside. Let's come down. It says, note that this charge separation is limited to the area on either side of the plasma membrane. On the whole, the cytosol and the ECF have the same overall charge, but real close to the membrane, whether it's on the inside or the outside, there is a charge. And without that charge, we can't live. It's that little difference. It's an electrical gradient. Now, I want you to come to the next paragraph. You remember a gradient means you got... Uh, uh, some kind of barrier between them. You got more on one side than you got on the other side. That's basically what we're saying here. So look at the next paragraph. The separation of charges, like the one we see here, is known as an electrical potential. And you'll hear people say about students, you know, they've got a lot of potential. Got a lot of potential. That means you got a lot of power if you use it correctly. You can do a lot of things if you use it correctly. Now, notice after the electrical potential, this is, these are terms you want to be familiar with. The name refers to the fact that an electrical potential is a source of potential, potential energy. Without that potential, we're dead in the water. So you got this sodium potassium pump. This specific protein, you got a number of those in a cell membrane. They're vital. If you took in a poison that bothered the sodium potassium pump, you'd die. You wouldn't have any energy in the sense of electricity. And so you would die. Couldn't move. Now, keep on with that sentence. 
This name refers to the fact that an electrical potential is a source of potential energy. Why is there a potential energy in separated charges? The answer is simple. An electrical potential is really just an electrical gradient. Remember when we talked about that? I believe it was about chapter two or three. We talked about like sodium being on one side and uh, say you got 10 milligrams per milliliter on one side and five on the other. That's a gradient. You've got more glucose inside the cell than you got outside the cell. That's a gradient, a difference. Okay. So what we have now is not a difference of glucose. It's a difference of ions, which are charged particles. So we have more charged particles on the outside than we do on the inside, at least right next to the membrane. Keep on coming down. You see where it says it got the little block there that says core potential great gradients? Okay. Go back and read that. Refresh yourself on what we're talking about because this is important. Without that gradient, we're dead in the water. I want you to come down under that little box where it says core principle. And I want you to come down to the second line under that box. You see it says the electrical potential found across the plasma membranes of all cells, as muscle cells, as nerve cells, is known as a membrane potential. All they're doing is telling you where the gradient is. The, it's around the membrane. The membrane potential and the study of this membrane potential is called electrophysiology. So we're dealing with electricity in the human body. Now, we can't deal with much or we get fried. Come on down to the next paragraph. The value of the membrane potential when a cell is at rest, when it is not, a stim is not stimulated or inhibited by any other factor, is called the resting membrane potential. Now, I don't doubt that you guys are sitting down just like me. And the muscles in your feet are relaxed, aren't they? But they're ready. And the, the nerves going to your muscles in the feet, they are ready to fire a charge, to take a charge, and then cause the muscles to, um, to contract, as you're supposed to know all those steps. I think I sent you something like that. Maybe you haven't done it yet. but I'll, so Have I sent you... Uh, a study guide for chapter 10 and 11 for test four. Okay, thank you, Destiny. I'll send one this afternoon. Let me write that down. Send study guide. Okay. Thank you, Shaniqua. Nothing like having a second. Okay. So now we're in this paragraph with resting membrane potential. And you see it says the resting membrane potential of most excitable cells, such as muscle and nerve cell, which is what we've been talking about, averages about minus 70 millivolts. So it's not a big charge. But is a, it is a charge that we must have in order to have electrical messages going through our body. Nerve impulses, that's another word for that. Action potential is another word for that. There's several things that you can use to describe this message that goes down the nerves and causes the muscles to contract or goes to a gland, uh, like all of us have come home sometime and, and maybe we, um, we smell mom's cooking. And so as soon as we smell it, next thing I know, next thing I've had happen to me is my mouth starts watering. It literally starts watering in anticipation to swallow that stuff and have it slide down to our tummies where it should be. So you got receptors up here that pick that up, send it to your brain, 
And those are electrical signals that go to your brain. And then they come down from your brain to your glands, your parotid gland, your submandibular gland, and so forth. And you start watering in anticipation. And it works, doesn't it? All of us slide that stuff right on down. And you see it says after 70 millivolts, which means that their cytosol is about 70 millivolts more negative, or you could say less positive. But we'll just keep it positive and negative, okay, In the, uh, than the ECF. Now, having said that, let's go back to chapter 11. Go back to chapter 11. We're going to page 393. <clears throat> okay, on page 393, you're in the second column. Now you can write those terms that I mentioned a few uh, just a few minutes ago about a nerve impulse that's uh, ions going back and forth, action potential, go, ions going back and forth, electrochemical signal, ions going back and forth, just terms that you may hear people use. That's okay. Hope it's working, Sonia. Glad you're back. So as you look in that second column, you see it says, in the muscle tissue chapter, you were introduced to some of the concepts of electrophysiology. This is what we're talking about, electricity and physiology. Now, before we continue in 11, go back to 354, page 354. Figure 1.14. You've seen this before. You look in the left side of the picture, you see the telodendrion coming down. And you see the little vesicles in there. Sometimes they call it an axon terminal. Either term is acceptable. You see the little vesicles in there. They dump the green diamonds, and the green diamonds are the neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. We've already gone over this. And the acetylcholine hooks to those proteins. Those purple boxes are proteins. So when acetylcholine attaches to them, they open up. And look what the sodium does. Now, the same thing is going to happen in a nerve. We're going to see that in just a minute. But you've already been exposed to this. This sodium comes in, and there is a reversal of charge. And of course, the muscle is going to move in just a few minutes, or not a few minutes, it's going to be milliseconds. But you see, if you follow the green line from those purple air, uh, little boxes, you see all the sodium coming in, arrows coming in, you see sodium coming in. And notice to the right, as you make that curve up, you see now the sarcolemma is positive on the inside and the outside now of the sarcolemma is negative. It's actually less positive, but don't worry about that. Just call it negative. 
And as you go along to the right, look at that green arrow right above the sarcolemma. What's it called? An action potential. You could say it's a nerve impulse. It's an electrochemical message. Okay? So follow those positive charges because sodium's coming in. And look there, it takes a dive into the transverse tubule. This is what you got to know for, you know, whenever you have a test next week, maybe. Well, we need to do it next week. And you see, it causes calcium to come out from the terminal cisternae. Sodium is important in your body. Calcium is important in your body. Now, obviously, homeostasis has to be involved, doesn't it? We don't want to have too much of either one of them, just the right amount. We've got mechanisms that have been given to us that um, we don't have to worry about it. We can put salt on our french fries and have a good time eating them. You can drink your milk. Had some nice milk this morning. But see, that change in charge is called an action potential. It's a message. Okay. Now, let's go back over to 393. You got the idea there about the changing of the ions. That's the electrical message. Now, 393, look down at the bottom of the column we were in where we started off with principles of electrophysiology. You see the bottom, it says ion channels and gradients. Don't go memorize that stuff. Don't do that. I'm not going to expect you to know it. You see, there are a lot of different channels in the plasma membrane, they're different proteins. They, can, they will let certain things in. Another protein will let something else in. So remember, number of amino acids, types of amino acids, sequence of amino acids, all that determines what that protein is going to do. That's how they're different. So you see we got leak channels, and then you got gated channels, ligand-gated, voltage-gated, mechanically-gated. Uh, Don't. Memorize it. Just know that there are a number of channels. You don't see it? Is that what you're saying, Nani? You don't you're not on page 393? Give me some kind of notation of what you're talking about, Nani. So I can say it again, or hopefully in some other way. Nadi, you're not responding to me. Okay, I'm going to move on, Nadi, because you're not. I'm not getting anything from you. But you don't have to know those channels. Just know that they're proteins that help move sodium into the cell and also out of the cell. So we have a gradient of ions. Now I want you to look on page 394, if you would, please. Three ninety four. I hope y'all are hearing me. I hope it's not breaking up out there. Just got too many people on the internet. That's all there is to it, isn't it? But Madison, if you'll get with me after class, instruct me on Zoom. I'll be glad to try that. Maybe Thursday. I think I get to see you guys too.
Okay, I'm going to keep on talking. Hopefully you're you're hearing. I'm not getting any response from anybody, especially Nadia. I'm trying to get an answer from her, but it's not something's not working. All right. Look at the top of page. Let's let's look at the top of page 395. Great, Kira. I'm glad you can. I hope other people can too. Look on page 395. Great. Thank you, Shaniqua. Yes, Destiny. Good. Makes my heart beat a little better. As you look at figure 1111, you see the little neuron up top. And you see where the axon is leaving the cell body. See the little box there? That little box would be called the axon hillock. Remember those terms that describe the structures of the neuron. Thank you, Tamika. And then you see that purple arrow coming down. Now it's pointing to that whole structure. That is a segment of the plasma membrane. They called it the axolema. Just like with a muscle, you called it the sarcolema. And as far as I know, that's that's the only two lemas that, um, that you need to be concerned with. So you see the ECF, extracellular fluid, you see the positives, okay? And then you go through the plasma membrane and you're into the cytosol and you see the negative. So that, what they're doing there is they've got a little probe in there and they're measuring the difference in voltage. And so you see it measures about 70 millivolts, minus 70 millivolts. The figure, uh, the, the heading says in terms of figure 11.11 .11 is measurement of the voltage, measurement of the voltage across a plasma membrane. Got it, Shaniqua? Good. Okay. So as you come down in the column, underneath that figure, you see it says this negative voltage is present when the cell is at rest, just as we mentioned about the muscles in your feet and the axons that are coming from your nervous system to your muscles in your feet, you're not moving your feet around probably, but you are moving your back muscles. You're moving your shoulder muscles or maybe because you're riding, you're bending your head, lifting it up and so forth, looking at the screen and You've actually got nerve impulses going all through those muscles and uh, through the nerves and, and then into the muscles so that the movements that you want and need in order to gather this information, they're firing. You're looking into the, the picture. You're writing things. But your feet, supposedly, are relaxed. And that's what's showing up. If we were to put a little probe into your one of your axons going to a muscle fiber, it would measure somewhere around 70 millivolts. It's charged and ready to go. But it's resting right now. So come on down into that paragraph and you see it says the negative voltage is present when the cell is at rest. And for this reason, it is called the resting membrane potential. Now notice the next italicized or um, bold print word. This cell in this state is said to be polarized. You remember back in chapter two when we talked about polar covalent bonds. That means that one side of the Molecule is a little bit positive. The other side's a little bit negative. That's polarity. 
we have the same thing with this gradient, ion gradient, is showing up in this neuron, in this uh, axon. So we would say that axon is polarized. In other words, there's a difference in ions, ion concentration, on either side, on, the, on both sides of the membrane. One's a little more positive than the other, but we, we do it like this. It's an illustration to say it's positive on the outside, negative on the inside. It means you've got more positive ions outside than you do in the inside. And the reason it's at a resting potential is because your sodium potassium pumps are working. Mine too. That's why I can wave to you. That's why I keep running my mouth. It keeps recharging. And we want to look at that. We want to talk about this recharging. So I want you to turn over to page 399. Figure. 1116, figure 1116. Now, as you look at this figure, look at the top. And you see here is a, a neuron. You see trigger zone up there. That's going to be the axon hillock. And you follow that little purple arrow, and you see the ECF, the extracellular fluid. There's your axolema. Same thing as a cell membrane. It is a cell membrane. And then you move across it, and you see uh, axoplasm, which is just specifically saying this is not just cytoplasm. It's in an axon. Okay? Just, but it's the same stuff, proteins, carbohydrates, water, ions. Now, something has stimulated the dendrites. Those are the little branches to the left up there. They've picked up an impulse. Maybe it's a fragrant smell. Let's go back to the kitchen, okay? And so you're up in your nasal passage. You've got these cells that pick up the various scents of uh, chocolate cookie, chocolate uh, ch chocolate chip cookies being made, or chili has a good aroma to it also. But you come in, you oh, I know that smell, and your mouth starts watering. So how do what, what happens? Those dendrites pick up the message, and they send it out the axon. Now, you look at the first part of the illustration of the phospholipid bilayer of the plasma membrane, and you notice it's negative on the outside and positive on the inside because sodium has rushed in through one of those protein channels and enough sodium has gone into the cell to make it positive on the inside, and the other side we list as negative. We'll just say it's just negative. Not really, but we're going to say that just for the sake of having some understanding about it. So that neuron is firing. We can say that's like when you stick your key into your ignition and you turn it, click, 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 and then you hear rrr, 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 like that. That battery is sending electricity to your starter and that turns over your flywheel. Doesn't mean anything to you, I know. But it starts turning the engine over and then pretty soon you got a spark and bang, it starts to fire up and you back off on your key and your engine's running. You don't need that battery for that. You've got a structure called an alternator, which you ought to check on about every 80 to 100,000 miles. 
it generates electricity so that your spark plugs will fire. And you need to rebuild that ever so often. I learned that the hard way. Now, notice that reversal of charge. What do they call it? It's an action potential. It's a nerve impulse. It's an electrochemical signal. And in the case we're talking about, that means there's going to be a message coming from your brain to your salivary glands. Those glands are what we call effectors. In other words, it's going to cause an effect. Now look a little bit to the right, and you see the action potential is moving to the right, and it has not changed the polarity. It has not changed the charge yet. It's moving in that direction. Look at the second picture underneath the first one. And you see positive charges to the right, negative charges up, um, to the right and up on the left. Okay, that membrane potential, that mem uh, action potential is moving. But look at the left. Come down on the next picture and look at the left. And you see positive on the outside and negative on the inside, don't you? Now, remember, we said that this axon was polarized. That's another way of saying it's charged and ready to go. Now, here's what I want you to do. Go back to the first illustration. And you see where it's negative on the outside and positive on the inside. Find already? And I want you to write the word depolarization. So in the depolarization, those positive ions have moved inside, and now the outside is negative and the inside is positive. You've got yourself a potential there. Depolarization would start with these sensors up here in our nose, and we're smelling something. They're receptors. And when they smell something good or bad, like fire in the house or something like that, smoke, Oh, boy, that alerts you. So those sodium ions have rushed into the inside of the cell, in this case, the axon, and you've got a reversal of charges. So the movement of those ions in, the movement of the sodium in is called depolarization. And that's going to go all the way down the axon to, uh, in our case, we're talking about the parotid gland here, the salivary gland, so that we produce saliva. Now, if it doesn't recharge, it's not going to fire again. But we've got a sodium-potassium pump. Look at the third illustration, the third drawing. And you see now it's positive on the outside and negative on the inside. And so what's happening is that the sodium is being pumped out. It doesn't show it there, but the sodium gets pumped out. 
again. And you reestablish polarity. And so as you look at the fourth one down there, you see it's back up positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Boy, is that an important protein. The sodium potassium pump. How fast does that occur? Really, really fast. I did a little research and found out that some of our nerves in our bodies can carry a message like that you need, isn't it? And it happens so quickly so we can get out of danger. But it repolarizes so quickly too. Now that takes energy. That's why we have to have some uh, ATP built up. We have to ingest carbohydrates and, and turn those into ATP molecules. And if you took a poison in, that stopped. Now we're just about finished with this chapter. Let's let's move on a little bit. There's another picture that might help you on page 402, figure 1118. I'm not going to go into it right now. But it's basically what I've been talking about. Remember, we're going to keep it as simple as we can. When we talk about an action potential, that is the reversal of the charge. Instead of being positive on the outside and negative on the inside, it becomes positive on the inside because sodium ions to some sort of effector. Now on page 403, page 403, you see there's a heading in the first column that says conduction speed. Now let's go back in our minds for a minute. We talked about a Schwann cell and an oligodendrocyte. Remember how they wrapped insulation around the axon? Not all axons are, are wrapped. In myelin, those that are, they're insulated. And you remember there were little breaks in the insulation called nodes of Ranvier. So what I want you to understand, challenging to understand it, but here's what I want you to take away from it. The myelin sheath. causes the action impulse, the action potential to jump from node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier. And that increases its speed tremendously. That's all I want you to take away from it. When you have a myelinated neuron, the impulse goes faster. The action potential goes faster than in a unmyelinated neuron. Or we should probably say axon. So in those, in those neurons where the axon is myelinated, there are breaks in the myelin. Now go back and review the Schwann cell and look at that picture about the Schwann cell and the oligodendrocyte. That oligodendrocyte works in the CNS, Schwann cells out in the PNS. And you'll see it wrapped around the axon, but then there's breaks in the insulation. So the message jumps from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. The potassium pump is repolarizing the node of Ranvier.
Okay, let's look on page 406. A couple of more things. We'll be through with this chapter. 406, Destiny. I think I said it again. On page 406, second column, you see overview of neuronal synapses. The junction of neurons. A little space between them. We'll talk about how it jumps that space. But if this is a synapse, this is the presynaptic neuron. This is the postsynaptic neuron. So there's a little space in there called a cleft. Okay, synaptic cleft. So very close to each other. And in closing the chapter, 415, table, not figure now, table. 11.3, 11.3, now not a figure, not a figure, okay, table 11.3, and you see it says major neurotransmitters, I want you to know about four or five of them, acetylcholine, you're already familiar with that, and then you see biogenic amines. Now that tells you that they're made from amino acids. That's another good reason to eat protein. Got to have those amino acids. You see how we got to be balanced in what we eat. Can't just eat ice cream and cookies all the time. So there's one. You come down to the biogenic. Those are the chemicals that would be released into the cleft between those telodendria or axon terminals or synaptic bulbs. Everybody's got a two or three. Okay. And of course you and I have to make those neurotransmitters. So that's the end of the material that will be on the test four. So I will send you, it's going to be very similar to the last one I sent you, but I will send you uh, a study guide as soon as we get off here. And then I got to go help some kids that are in some problems. Don't know, all, don't, Kira, don't go all, know all those biogenic amines. Just norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. Well, I guess in a sense you're right uh, because I didn't include histamine. Some of you know about histamine. You've probably taken antihistamines. Okay. All right. Well, made it through in spite of the saboteur that wanted to ruin our day. If you don't have any questions, I'm going to end the stream. And Madison, you can get on with me. And uh, let's see, you've got my email, right? I think you've got my email. You think you got it, Madison?
Yes, I'll do that, Courtney. Sure will. Planning on doing it. If you got time, Madison, give us about 30 minutes, okay? Oh, that's good. Okay, maybe get some information. Quit having these obstacles. What is it Garth Brooks says? All these obstacles make us stronger. Got to have that attitude. Okay? No, don't, don't include histamine. That's okay. Don't worry about doing that. All right, we'll see you guys later.